about the middle-aged male or female, let's say 40 to 45 years old, um, a median household income, let's say they make about 70 to $72,000 per year, and yeah. their expenses come out to about 75 to 80% of that. So okay. they have about 20% that they could use to invest. Um, what's your advice to that person? Yeah. So again, it, de it, it depends on obviously a lot of other factors, you know. Um, but to start with, um, no matter what age you are, when we're talking about investing, um, it's really step four of our our four step process, right? We have this this financial planning process we call the four by four financial independence plan, right? And so just to, you know, we'll, maybe we'll get back into this more later, but just to talk to answer your question, the first step of the four by four plan is um, optimize everything. And what we mean by that is when 40 year old shows up, they're probably going to have, you know, maybe a 401k, maybe an IRA, maybe some savings account. You know, they're, they're going to have stuff, right? So the first thing we want to do is uh, uh, is simplify their life. So we look at everything they have. Uh, we might eliminate some things. We might consolidate some things, right? The idea is to get them financially organized. So at the end of the day, everything they have is doing all that it can for them, right? Now, they may not have a lot. Or they may have a lot of little things all over the place, but we're going to simplify that and, and make it so that they can manage what they have and know that even though they may not have as much as they want or they need, that whatever what they do have is invested in the right places. It's in the right places, right? So that's step one. Mm -hmm. Step two, we're going to eliminate your debt, okay? Now, this is where, unfortunately, I lose a lot of clients, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> a lot, a lot of people I don't say they're addicted to debt, but they're you know they 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 come to us with you know credit card debt or student loans, big ones, right? Automobile loans, um, you know, in our, in our world, you got to get rid of the debt. Uh, that's the second step in the process. And we have a, 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 a process to make that happen, right? Just like we have a process to optimize everything, we have a process to, to, to make that happen. But we want that debt to go away, right? Um, and we can talk mm -hmm. about debt in a moment too, but we want that, that debt to go away because then it frees up even more cash flow um, to do that saving investing we were talking about, right? So first step, right. optimize. Second step, eliminate debt, right? Then the third step is we want to set up what I refer to as significant liquid cash reserves, right? Now, there's a, a, a lot of other financial advisors out there, well, at least one very well-known one that talks about cash reserves. And he generally talks about like a thousand bucks in a couple months. I'm not talking about that. I want my clients to have big cash reserves, big amount of cash reserves. Um, and when I'm talking big, I'm, I mean like a year's worth of expenses. Maybe uh, in your example, somebody is making seventy, eighty thousand dollars, so they could have eighty, maybe a hundred thousand dollars of cash reserves. And um, why? You know, why would I want you to the, my client to have so much money? Well, there's two reasons, right? When things go wrong, cash reserves will be there to bail you out. Right. Um, you know, back in 2008, you know, the news would say hey, people lost their home. People gave up their home, you know, whatever it was. Well, people don't lose their home. I mean, literally, the house is still sitting there where they <laughs> where they handed over the keys to the bank. But they gave up their home because they couldn't afford the payments because they lost their job. Right. And um, so if things go wrong, if you have a year's worth of um, cash reserves, you can go a long time before you have to panic. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, so we wanted to have significant liquid cash reserves. Um, conversely, when things go, when opportunities present themselves, when things go right, you need to have cash to take advantage of those opportunities, right? So I'm going to go down a little rabbit trail yeah. again here. Um, there's a um, acronym called RAS, R-A-S, stands for Reticular Activating System. And um, it's, it's every one of us, and, and basically it's a, it's a process that our brains allow us to focus on things, right? Because we all have five senses, right? We can see and smell mm -hmm. and taste and hear and feel whatever, right? And uh, if you, if you, and by the way, there's no on and off switch to our senses, right? We're always seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, right? All these, these senses are going on. So in order to focus on anything, our brain has to have a way to filter out what it is we're seeing, right? And uh, how that relates to, uh, to, you know, to this concept is if you, you know, think about it yourself. If, did you ever own a new car, Paul? Did you ever buy a new car? Yep. I yeah. have. All right. What kind of what kind of car was it? Well, I've had I bought a Lexus. All right. You bought a Lexus. What co what color was it? It was white. 
white okay now just think about it right after you bought that new white lexus did you look around to see new white lexuses like all over the place pretty yeah yeah that's right, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the reticular activating system working. Those cars were always there, right? But you probably started seeing them even as you were thinking about buying the car, right? They started showing yeah. up, maybe a different color Lexus, but you'd see the same model. They're all over the place, right? And that's your that's your reticular activating system going ahead and focusing on something you want so that it, and putting away all these other distractions. And so what I say is, if you have significant liquid cash reserves, not only will you have the money to act on opportunities, opportunities will actually present themselves to you, right? Like and that. right. So the opportunities were always there, but because you never had the ability to act on them anyway, you just never saw them, right? So like that. yeah, right. All right. So we went through one steps one so, through four, and the answer to your question is you got to get stuck through steps one through three before you get to four. That was what your question was. What is that? You know, a couple with seventy, eighty thousand dollars and twenty percent of their money and have to do to invest? Well, you. Make what sure you got what you need, and then get those debts paid off, and then get the cash reserves, and then we'll figure out what to invest in. Got it. So okay. if you don't know Randy Lupke, he's um, he's well known. Um, I'll give you some of his credentials. He's a registered financial consultant and an independent fiduciary investment advisor. But I met Randy. How I even came in contact with Randy was. Um, like four or five years ago, it's been, mm -hmm. I read his best selling financial book. It's called The Business Owner's Guide to Financial Freedom What Wall Street Isn't Telling You. And um, I think this is a, a good uh, time to bring up this uh, uh, principle I call the uh, perfect investment, right? Uh, you know, what is the perfect investment? You know, what should I invest in? And I, I have a uh, a really good description. Now think about this for a moment. This investment would be 100% safe, so you'd never lose a penny, right? It'd be 100% liquid, so anytime you wanted to get your hands on it, you could do it without paying any fees or penalties or restrictions, whatever. So 100% safe, 100% liquid, and the perfect investment would be getting you know unlimited rate of return. So let's just say 100% rate of return, and all those returns would be 100% tax-free, and to boot, it'd be 100% passive, meaning you don't have to do a darn thing to get it, right? So if you think about it, wouldn't that be the perfect investment? 100% safe, 100% liquid, 100% returns that are 100% tax-free, and you don't have to do nothing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right, so, so the point is, and you know, I can see by the smile on your face, and anybody listening to this would say the same thing, there is no perfect investment, right? And so you, you have to know that whenever you're making any investment, you have to be willing to compromise something to um to get what you want right so maybe i'm willing to compromise some liquidity to get more safety or, or i'm willing to compromise safety to get higher rates of return but i always got to be willing to give up something um to get to get what i want so yeah, an another yeah another principle i talk about is there's only three things that you can do with your money period right you can spend them you can lend it or you can invest it so you can spend it lend it or investment right so Everybody knows what spending is, and we won't get into the nuances of that, but there are some financial implications besides just, you know, your money's gone. Um, but lending it is, uh, you know, people don't think about it, but when you buy a bond, you're actually lending money to somebody or something, right? You can lend, you buy yeah. a corporate bond. Um, you know, the, the financial services industry is very good at coming up with these euphemisms that make people very, feel very positive about doing something. Right. And buying is a real positive action, you know, buying. Right. So if you went, if I was a uh, corporation and I wanted you to lend you money, you'd lend me money. Well, you might be reticent to do that. But if you want to buy my bonds, that, that's a pretty positive thing. Right. But you're in, in fact, lending money to the corporation. Um, and another even more com um, a common example would be you go to your local bank and you put money in the checking account. Right. Well, what are you doing? You're lending money to the bank. Right. And and of course, uh, on a checking account, they're paying you zero percent interest. Right. And um, but you're still nonetheless, you've loaned money to the bank um, yeah, in exchange for having the ability to, you know, to write checks from that money um, in the future. So so getting back to the, um, you know, the, the simple investment, you could buy bonds today. Uh, Right, and then we're talking about December 16, 2022. You can get like a uh, three-month treasury bond that's going to pay a 3% interest rate, 
right? Now, the reason I'm pointing that out, let's go back to my, you know, my five qualities of perfect investment, 100% safe, 100% liquid, so on and so forth. So is a bond, um, you're loaning money to the federal government of the United States, biggest, you know, country in the world, right? Um, so is it safe? Of course it is, right? Um, is it liquid? Well, sort of. I mean, it's tied up for three months. I mean, three months goes by like that, right? So let's just say, right. yeah, it's, it's almost perfectly liquid. It's not like I could buy it today and 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 you know and get my money out tomorrow. But three months, um, the rate of return, you know, it's not a hundred percent, but it's three percent. And after the last ten years of watching zero percent interest rates, three percent looks pretty darn good, right? Um, and uh, it's it is risk free and it's passive, right? I don't have to do a thing. I just have to buy the bond. I'm going to get paid three percent interest. And I uh, just got to hold it for three months. So that might be a good option, right? Um, alternatively, if, if they wanted to uh, invest in securities, um, again, small amount of money, young person, you know, just invest in the broad market like the S&P 500 through an ETF, exchange traded fund. Um, why? Because you're getting the, you get to own a small piece of 500 of the largest companies on the planet and uh, cost you nothing, basically nothing to do it. So going back to those qualities of investment, is it safe? No. You know the, the stock market goes up and down is it liquid yes i can i can buy it this morning and sell it this afternoon and there's really no fees for doing that um are the returns good they are over time again we talked about you know getting right. started over time yeah they're going to get long pretty term. good long quick period of time right right um uh, as a tax-free depends on how you own it if you own it inside of a roth yeah if you don't no uh but is it passive yeah because you just buy the broad market so Again, going back to what I said five yeah. minutes ago, keep it simple, right? And then if you just follow those five different qualities just to understand what you're going to get, and what you're going to give up, that would that's the way I'd look at it. Sounds great. So just a, a little summary. For someone that's just getting started, um, buy an ETF, a, a ETF that focuses on like hundreds of, hundreds of different stocks from the S&P 500, so an ETF low cost ETF that covers your stock investments. And then on the other side, you recommend uh, possibly short term bonds where people can buy these bonds directly. And that's at Treasury Direct, right? Treasury Direct is the website to do that. Yeah, yeah, but they actually have ETFs that that simul simulate the uh, bonds, so you don't even need to go to the hassle of buying the bond directly if you don't want to. You can just buy the ETF that that emulates the uh, the three year three month Treasury bond and get the same thing with low cost and no hassle. So, so and you know we didn't talk about that at the beginning of the, the the recording of the show, Paul. But obviously, we're not giving any specific investment advice to anybody. We're not telling anybody. We're just doing general general thoughts and ideas here, and. Um, Again, your question was, how do you get started? And I said, well, keep it simple. That's the, that's the bottom line, keep it simple. And, and so we just talked about two really simple ways to make some pretty decent investments, um, either invest in the S&P 500 through an ETF, or maybe invest in the three-month treasury bill through uh, an ETF as well.